Well, everybody, the DMW Top Ender 79 is nearly finished. There's a few extra things that we've got to go on it yet, but I just couldn't wait. I've just got to show you where we're up to. I want to show you the whole entire car. We've only got to fit the solar system and all that other jazz to it and some extra little bits and pieces on the roof rack. So let's start at the front of the car and I'm going to run you through the whole build. How good does the TJM bar work look on this 79 that we've been building? There are a couple of reasons why I chose TJM bar work. Back in 2012, when I bought my first dual cab 79, I put TJM bar work on it, and I had some massive run-ins with wildlife, and that bar work never faltered. So I thought, the TJM stuff is a no-brainer. This car is going to be traveling out west, up north, with whoever wins this fantastic prize. So TJM stuff had to go on the car, in my opinion. Now, we've also run the TJM spotlights. We've got a TJM 12,000 pound winch up front here, and we've got the GME, UHF radio that's in the car, but obviously the aerial's mounted to the bull bar. I think this package, the way it is, looks absolutely fabulous. What we've also done, we've put the side rails on it and we've put some TJM steps. Now, what we've done to make the TJM steps just a little bit better to suit this vehicle, as we've put a 300 extension in it, the actual side steps go down past the car a little bit under the rear toolboxes that are on the front of the tray, and that helps protect the underside of those but it also does something else that's really, really cool. And you've actually got a place to put your foot. We've tapered the front toolbox so your foot can go right in there. You can stand up, safe place to put your feet, to jump up, have a look on top of the rack, put stuff, whatever you need to do there. And the TJM side step absolutely makes that a cracker. While we're talking about awesome products from TJM that protect the vehicle, there's also some underbody protection plates that we just haven't fitted yet to the vehicle. We've also got a TJM high lift jack, which is a must when you're traveling out west, and an awesome recovery kit that's gonna be going in the vehicle. As we know, these 79 series run the big V8 diesel, which I personally love. They sound cracking and they got heaps of torque and all the rest of the stuff, but they're still a modern day finicky diesel that really requires clean fuel. And when you're traveling in the outback, that is something that is really hard to get hold of. So what I've decided to do is run a secondary fuel filter system, and I've got one from Direction Plus because I reckon they are one of the best on the market. So next up, we added a catch can. Now this one's from Direction Plus also. It's called their ProVent system. So with modern day diesel engines, they recirculate some exhaust gases for the emission control. So what this does, it catches the muck and gunk before it gets into your manifold because it can build up and then you'd have to get the manifolds cleaned out. These aren't a flashy item and they're probably pretty boring to some people, but when you're building an extreme tourer like this, I think they're a big must because you don't want to be stuck out somewhere with bad fuel and your car conks out. So these two items, they're a big tick on my list when I'm building a vehicle. The one thing you won't see under the bonnet of this car though is the Ultimate 9 Vehicle Tracker. Now you're thinking, what do I need that? I've got insurance if someone pinches me car. But what about all that time and effort and blood, sweat and tears you've put into building your ultimate car that you absolutely love? You don't know where it is, someone's got it. I know you can get insurance, but how about being able to know where your car is, you can go to the police and say, there's my car, could you please go and get it for me? Someone's stolen it. So for me, I've put Ultimate 9 vehicle trackers on all my vehicles because I love them that much. I want to know where they are and I do not want someone else getting their hands on something that I've put all my blood, sweat and tears into. Before we jump in and show you what we've done to the interior, we'll give you a bit of a rundown first. So we've done the Stage 4 Car Builders Kit like we did in our demo vehicle. You know, we've sound deadened all underneath the floor, the back wall, the roof, in the doors, the whole lot. And look, that is a cracking kit, that is. And it's a must when you're touring around, getting all that sort of noise from vibrations when you're doing on corrugated roads and all that sort of jazz. So if you own a 79 series, I've got to highly recommend that Car Builder Stage 4 kit. Once we'd done the Stage 4 Car Builders kit, we sent it back out to Cruiser Consoles to work their magic. Now, we've done this one a little bit different to our demo. We wanted this one a little bit more practical for out west touring. Now, we didn't put the fridge in this one. We opted for the big centre console. Now, what that does is it gives you way more storage space and it's a little bit more comfortable for the longer trips with your arm on that armrest, in my opinion. 
As I've done with my own personal 79 build, I opted it up with this overhead console. The reason why is that it's got so much usable storage and it's a great place for the UHF. Now, as is mine, we've gone with the XRS GME in this one. One of the best UHFs on the market in my opinion. Hey Luke, you got a copy over there mate? Coming through big boy. Ha <laughs> ha! And I could not not put in the under seat drawers because what a magic place to store all your valuables and whatever else. Have a look at this. It's just there. I've got one under my seat as well. You know, whatever you want, wallets, you name it, just can go in there. It's all stored away in a perfect spot that is actually secure. As with the center console, we get the two drink holders. Now, <laughs> the 79 series is very light on with drink holders, as we know. That's why we go to the cruiser consoles and they solve all our problems. They've also solved the problem of our speaker pods. So you get your speaker pods and you can actually have speakers in your front and rear doors where there's no space for them in the factory lineup. But what it also does is we get drink holders in the doors as well. So it's gone from one drink holder to five now. How cool is that? So while we were fitting out the interior, we decided to throw in the pedal torque from Torque It. Now this is a throttle controller that takes out that lag in acceleration. Now it's a must, I believe, in a modern day diesel because the last thing you want is to be pulling out at an intersection that you've got to get through and you're putting the foot down and you just don't feel like you're going anywhere. This actually, I reckon, makes your car feel a little bit safer, a little bit zappier, and you know, we don't like slow cars, do we? While we're down here, what I really wanted to show you were these cool, dirty life wheels and the Dick CPEC tyres. Now, I reckon these wheels really set this car off and make it look absolutely mwah. The awesome dirty life wheels that I just said are DT1 and the Dick CPEC tyres are the Trail Country EXP and if you want to know where to get these, they come from the legends at Dynamic Wheel Co. While we're talking about wheels and tyres, we've included two spares. So when you're travelling remotely, don't worry about getting a flat because there's two more on the back of the car to sort you out. One thing to note about these wheels and tyres, they're actually load rated to suit our GVM of $44.99. So that's a very, very cool thing. These are very tough wheels and really, really tough tyres. Another thing to note about these wheels, they're all the same offset because we've done the diff correction with the D-Wiz diff in this for our $44.99 GVM upgrade. The diff housing replacement doesn't just correct the wheel track, but it also gives you a higher load rating on your axle load as well. It's no secret that the 79 standard mirrors are just terrible. They vibrate on rough roads, you can't see what you're towing. So what we've done, we've added the Gen 2 Clearview mirrors so they don't just look good, they're awesome and functional as well. This is our brand new tray and canopy design and it's called the XTR range. Now these are to suit all dual cabs on the market, not just the 79 series. These are super cool, they're super lightweight and I can't wait to show you around them. There are two size ranges to the XTR. There's the 1950 long tray that takes the 1700 long canopy and the 1750 long tray that takes a 1500 long canopy. Now they're all set up, you can put jerry cans on the back, ladders, you can put your spare wheels, all that is customizable to yourselves. Now we've also, on the longer one, we also include the front toolbox. Now that's an optional extra if you want to go that, but with the extra long tray, it depends on where your wheel is on which particular dual cab you've got, you might be able to fit one of these cool ones. These trays come standard with a water tank. And now check out this little cool filler here, the little BMW badge on there, I reckon it looks cool anyway. So touching more on the water tank situation is that this is the 1950 long tray. It gets the big dog water tank, it gets the full 70 litres. On the 1750 long tray, it gets the 40 litre tank. Now, the reason for this is that we've kept the full size drawer in both trays. Now that's the full seal drawer that you've seen on lots of different episodes before, so why don't we just check it out. So I still love how ergonomically designed this tray is. It's sort of wrapped around the back of the car. Now with this it's pretty simple. You undo these clips, you turn them like this and it just slides straight out. Now this will double up as your table, your tool storage, whatever you want to keep in here. It is fully weatherproof, dustproof, waterproof, you name it and you get to keep all your stuff dry in here, all your valuables. Now, it's one of my go-to places on my vehicle. 
I keep all my electrical tools in there for when I'm traveling. I do not want to get all that stuff mucked up because you know they're very, very expensive. But it's up to you guys what you want to store in here. If you're into 79 series, you actually know when you put rear toolboxes on them, you've got to have a cutaway for the exhaust. But when you've got other dual cabs on the market, you get a full size box. I'll just show you on this one. We've got the step in it that actually lets your big exhaust run through there for this big 79. But like I said, on the standard dual cab, this is a full size box and you can fit so much stuff in these. So onto the canopy now. I can't show you the fit out of the canopy because it's not completely done yet, but I can actually talk to you about how these actually unbolt. So you've got four bolts down the side here. You just rip them out, you put your jacking legs in, take that off, pull out from underneath it, and you've got a full tray again to do whatever you need to do. Or if you just want to leave your package back at camp, so you might have your rooftop tent and all that sort of stuff on it, secure it on those legs and you can go wheeling and all that sort of jazz and you don't have to run the risk of denting your canopy. With these packages, the rear toolboxes come standard, the water tank, the rear pull-out sealed drawer as well, and what they've got, they've got these cool little features here, these little flaps. Now these ones here is where you turn the water tap on. I might need to put some water in the tank, but that is where it all is. So on top of our cool XTR canopy, we've got a front runner rack. Now these racks are very, very cool. One thing I really like about them is they've kept their load rating, and that is a must in when you're touring around Australia. Not like some of the other manufacturers that they derate their actual rack rating when you go off-road, which that's useless to everybody. But these front runner racks, they've also got some really other cool features, like there's a table in there, and there's all these other accessories that you can bolt to them. Let's have a crack at this table that is up there in the roof rack from Front Runner. Look at that, hey? Even a short bloke like me can get it out. Now, you know, have a go at this. Done camp set up, do whatever you need, you know, make your sandwiches and all that. Not as easy as the actual drawer on the tray, but nonetheless, how cool is this? Well, now we've got it set up, why don't we see how easy it is to pack up, especially for a short ass like me. Not too bad. Bit hard to see when you're that short. How about the Drifter Stockton Rooftop Hard Shell Tent? Now, these are an absolute cracker. They're easy to set up. They're comfy. They're a must have, I reckon, on all the tourers cruising around out there if you want simplicity of getting in and out and quick setup and quick shutdown. Now, you've seen me use that on 24-7. I'm actually in love with these tents. I've got one going on my Demo 79 as well. So that's why I thought one for you guys on this one, you gotta get the Drifter Stockton rooftop tent. Now let's check out why these Drifter Stockton tents are so cool and easy to set up. I've just got the ladder out, ready to go. Have a go at this. You unzip that, lift these up. Simple, simple, simple. Clip them in there like that, down. It misses everything off there. That's just the number one thing I love about the ladder is super cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it over this end so I can reach the latches. Undo the latch. Give her a bit of push. So we'll get this, you pull this bar out like that, okay. You lift these up, pull this one up, done as that. And then what you do is you just reach in, there's a little crossbar and there's two stages. Okay, so you pull this, that out, give them a clip, pull that one out, done, zip that up. How long did that take? And super cool, super comfy. You got the little thing you can zip up. You got your little boot racks, phone charger and USB, strip lighting. What else do you want from a rooftop tent?
Now you've seen how easy it is to set up, let's see how quick it is to pack down. We'll just do the opposite. Unzip this, unclip these, look at that. Done, come back a bit, reach that one, he can come down, reach this one, I can just jump out of the way, look at that, down, that pushes in, okay, fold your little booty things up, like so, grab the corner, tuck him in, tuck some of them in, okay, that's good this side, look at that, push them in, put the clip on, clip him over, Super simple and quick. And have a go of this ladder. You just do these clips, give them a shaky. And done, and we move into the next campsite. How awesome are these drifter chairs? Hannah, what do you reckon? Comfy? It's comfy. Yeah, and they recline as well. Oh, and look, yeah. this little coffee table, how mad is this? You've got your beer, your cheese and bickies, you know. We're surrounded by warmth because of the fire pit. Absolute cracking products from Drifter. And this rooftop tent, how comfy, look. Oh, kicking back, campsite, around the fire, drinking beers, eating cheese and crackers. This is living, I can tell you. Well, how about that? The car is nearly finished. It looks finished on the outside. Just, just those little finishing touches that's going to make this vehicle one of the best touring rigs in Australia. Now, I'm extremely proud about the build so far, but please tell me what you think of the vehicle and what we've done to it in the comments below. What you'll be winning is this awesome package you can see behind us. It's the XT79 Top Ender that DMW has built. It's got all this cool drifter stuff. It's got red arc accessories. It's got TJM bar work, the list goes on and on and on. And also, it's got a 4.8 metre bluefin boat and trailer that goes with this. Oh, I mean, how mad is this? All you have to do is jump onto dmw.com.au, go to our online store and buy some merchandise. It's that simple to get in the comp. If you've liked watching this video and seen what we've done with the build series so far, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our social media outlets because you get notifications of when we're doing the next video. But for now, I'm gonna kick back around the fire and have another couple more beers and I'll catch you on the next video.